So I decided to make a quick start overview video of the push chop device that I made available for download last week. It consists of two devices, the brain and the instances. Um, first thing you want to do is drag a brain anywhere on your set. I'm going to put it onto my master track. It has controls for turning everything on and off, time signature, quantization, and a reinitialize that will reconnect this to your push if you disconnect it while you're using live or if you have neglected to plug it in before starting live. So now that we have our brain, we can populate our tracks with instances of the looper. I'm going to go ahead and drag it onto my drums bus. This has all your controls for the loop length, the sequence length, record quantize, button quantize, color scheme, audio in and out routing, the row select, and a readme that you can read right there. Um, let's just go ahead and describe what each of these things do. The loop length, you can set it between 1 and 8 bars. I'm just going to set it for 2 for the drums. The sequence length is a ratio of the loop length. So if we have it set to 0.5, it will be half of the loop length. If we have it set to 1, it will be the full loop length. Loop length. Let's leave it at 1. Um, record quantization will quantize your record recordings to coincide with Ableton Live's tempo and beats. Uh, you can also quantize the input down to 64th notes or no quantization. Um, leave it at 16 for now. The color scheme will change what color our looper will be displayed as. Let's just leave it at 1 for now. In and out is how the device will treat incoming audio. It will pass it never when the device is armed or always. And the row select will choose which row of the push is tied to this particular looper. So let's go ahead and open this on our push. If you press the tap tempo button, this will turn on all of our loopers. And I already have three that I've dragged onto the bass, lead, and pad. So those are all set up and ready to go. But uh, let's get a drum loop going. So that's playing, but we don't hear anything because our input routing is at never. Let's just change that to one armed. And when these are red blinking, that means the track is armed for recording and another press will record a loop. And now this will continue to play. Sounds like I was a sixteenth late, but that doesn't really matter. Um, so you can reverse the audio. You can turn it to one shot mode. You can increment and decrement the speed. Pressing both at the same time will reset the speed. You can record sequences of button presses. Pressing again will revert to normal behavior. If you press the metronome button, it will expose your pitching and stuttering controls. These will engage as soon as you touch the knob, so if I just touch the stutter, it'll play back that slice and you can shorten it. Make it longer. And if you release it, it will just return to playing as if you had never touch this control. This will control the pitch in more in a more granular fashion than you can with the So all those controls are available for all of these loopers and you can record a bunch of audio at the same time if we just launch this scene.
So that is a quick overview of push chop and how it works. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feature requests. I will be continuing to develop this moving forward. Thanks for watching.